What is going on, YouTube people? Neil Cards and Comics here to talk a little football. We're going to go over some graphs, some charts. One might even say this is going to be a charts and graphs video. Classic charts and graphs video. Used to do these all the time back in the day. We are going to dive into some market movers. Link in the description down below. If you want your own charts and graphs, you can have them at the tips of your fingers. 14 day free trial and a 20% discount code down below. If you don't, that's perfectly fine too. We're gonna glance at some quarterback pricing. We're gonna glance at some wide receiver pricing and just kind of just roll through these and just kind of generally talk a little bit. Nothing, nothing super crazy here. Uh, for the purposes of this, all the charts go back 90 days just to keep things uniform. For the most part, I used silver prisms where I could. The exception to that is 2018, I use optic hollows. Uh, because 2018 Silver Prisms are mythical beasts. There are very few of them. So it, it's not going to be perfect matching across the board. The pop counts very wildly. And I kind of went year by year uh, from 2017 up and through today on the quarterbacks. The wide receivers, I just kind of cherry pick some names and threw them into a chart just to kind of see where things stack up. Some interesting stuff on the uh, wide receiver page. I did not do running backs. Running backs, listen, they're just so volatile. And I think really the overall arching theme to kind of keep in mind here is most of the players that we're looking at today, uh, whether you like it or not, whether you want to hear this or not, most of these card prices are probably going to be cheaper at some point in time in the next six months. Uh, outside of a couple of guys will go up. For the most part, most of these guys are going to go down. Now, it might not be much down. It might be flat. It might be way down. Who knows? I don't have the crystal ball, but... Generally speaking, not all these guys are going to stay flat or go up. Most are going to go down. That's the way that it works. It is time, as we always say around these parts, expectations meet reality. And all the off-season lofty expectation and pump and priming and the whole nine yards that has been going on, now the rubber meets the road. Uh, I'm recording this Friday evening, so we already had the Chiefs game. You know, Mahomes was Mahomes. But boy, oh boy, when Kelsey's out, he has no weapons. That wide receiver core is a mess. So hopefully Kelsey can get back on the field next week, especially for my Dynasty League team. Uh, but they looked a little rough. Goff didn't necessarily let it up. He played fine. St. Brown looked good. Uh, surprised David Montgomery got as much run as he did over Jameer Gibbs. But it is what it is. Right off the bat, let's go ahead and talk about 2017 class really quickly. Mahomes. And Deshaun Watson are the two that I pulled from this one. 2017 silvers for Mahomes, I pulled the PSA 10 and the PSA 9. For Watson, I just pulled the PSA 10. Uh, over the last 90 days and heading into the season here, Watson, or, or I'm sorry, Mahomes rather, is down slightly. Not a ton, uh, about 10% on both grades. Watson is basically flat. Now, obviously Mahomes has a lot baked in there. Obviously, Mahomes has a lot already baked in. That cake is halfway done in the oven. It is not freshly poured into the pan and into the oven. So there is a little bit more substance to that. You know, he has multiple Super Bowls, MVPs, etc. He has the accolades. He's beginning to pile them up. That being said, listen, if they have a bad season, uh, if they don't look that great or they just look mediocre, his prices are probably going to come down a little bit. There is even more baked into that price. Watson, uh, for <laughs> my Cleveland Browns quarterback, uh, we'll see how this goes this year. 300 bucks for a silver PSA 10 of Watson. Now, obviously, he has a ton of baggage on him, and it is really kind of hard to evaluate his card pricing in a vacuum. But for the most part, his prices, you know, you got to, it's really, like I said, it's tricky here to separate the off the field stuff and on the field. His prices, given what he has done in the past on the field, seem ridiculously cheap. Obviously, he has the boat anchor around him of the off the field incidents. But if he plays well, he, I think, has room to go up because his prices are so cheap. And... A lot of people in Cleveland will look sideways if he's running up and down the field, they're scoring touchdowns, and they're winning. I'm just telling you that right now. It's the way that we work. Not everybody. I don't want to paint with that broad of a brush, but a decent number of people that were on the fence will bandwagon hop over if he is leading them to win after win after win. 
And when you consider his prices compared to a lot of other guys that we're going to talk about on this list, just keep that $300 price point in mind. That's all I'm saying. Full disclosure, I own one silver BGS 95 True Gem Plus that I picked up at the National. For a potential flip for that very reason. If they start off hot, I think he actually has room to go up. A lot of these guys have stuff baked into their prices. Watson has negative baked into his prices. He's got the bad stuff baked in. Let's move over to 2018. We have to switch off to Carlos for 2018. Uh, I pulled the full gambit here. We got Josh Allen up at the top, most expensive. His card prices are up ever so slightly. Lamar Jackson down about 10%. And then down at the bottom, we have Mr. Sam Darnold up 20%. I know uh, Pump and Dump Steve has been pumping and dumping Sam Darnold hard lately and taking some profits on his little rise up in prices. And then forever, my boy, Baker Mayfield down at the bottom. They're basically right at Sam Darnold prices down about 20% over the last 90 days. Uh, Josh Allen, another one. Listen, he's a hell of a fantasy quarterback. He's a hell of a real life quarterback. We saw it last year. Uh, when he got bounced, his prices took a little bit of a hit. A lot of pressure on him this year to really perform. A lot still baked into those prices. We will see what happens with him. Uh, Lamar Jackson, a lot of people are predicting a bounce back season with his stuff. We'll see. Uh, Darnold is a backup quarterback. If he would get run and play well, who knows to the moon. Uh, he could sit on the bench all year if Purdy plays halfway decent. And then Baker Mayfield, the touchdown maker. Down there in Tampa Bay, that team seems messy at best. They have a lot of controversy in the wide receiver room, it seems like. At least as of time of recording, there's questions surrounding Mike Evans. Uh, listen, Baker is what he is. I think he'll be in the league a long time as this kind of like, hey, we just kind of need a guy or a backup quarterback or whatever. He is perfectly mediocre at football. I still really like him, but I own next to zero of his actual cards. Next up, 2020, the vaunted 2020 class. This class does have a lot of hype around it. We got Joe Burrow up at the top, 2.4K. Justin Herbert sitting at around 17, 17, 1800. One hasn't actually sold in a while, uh, but we'll put it around the $1,700 price tag for the purposes of this. Jalen Hurts, guys, guy goes to the Super Bowl, plays absolutely fantastic last year, and he can't even crack the top two uh, in his own quarterback class at 1000 bucks. Jordan Love sitting down there at 485 and Tua down there at 475. Uh, Tua obviously gets really hurt because of all the concussion stuff. I mean, when the when the guy says he considered retiring in the offseason, that's a pretty rough look. It would be really, really hard to throw a bunch of money into Tua. Even if he starts off playing great, you are literally worried every single time he drops back the pass. Jordan Love is the great unknown. We will see if he could step into Aaron Rodgers' shoes. These are two, we kind of go back to what we were talking about before on the Watson thing. Uh, these two guys, you know, Tua, major concussion is issues. Jordan Love, the great unknown. In PSA 10, both go for a little under 500 bucks. Deshaun Watson goes for 300. And once again, I know Deshaun Watson has the off the field issues slash stain on him. But from a talent perspective and a price point perspective, I would feel better about Watson stuff than love or Tua, at least in this case. Uh, Hertz at a thousand bucks. It just seems absolutely crazy that he is that much cheaper than Herbert and Burrow. Uh, Burrow, I am a little concerned about this calf thing that maybe he gets off to a slow start. I'm not concerned for the course of the season, but I am a little worried about potentially a slow start to the season. They play the Browns week one. That should be one of the better games on Sunday. We will see what happens there. Herbert, new offensive coordinator, I believe, and they're going to try to throw the ball down the field more. We will see if that matters. He can light up the stat sheet, but Chargers, they're in like Clipper territory. Clippers are going to Clipper. Chargers are usually going to Charger, and it does not typically work out well. The one thing you see different here that we really haven't seen on the previous two pages are a lot of green. These guys are trending up. They're still got a little bit of shine left on them. It hasn't quite come off yet. Burrow up slightly, 10%. Herbert down slightly. Once again, one isn't sold in a hot minute. Jalen Hurts up 20%. Jordan Love up 17%. And Tua up 15%. So the young guy is still getting a little bit of love. 2021, and you did notice we skipped the 2019 class. It's Kyler Murray and Daniel Jones. Kyler Murray may not play this year because the Cardinals want to lose. And Daniel Jones is perfectly adequate. 
2021, Trevor Lawrence. He is the new golden boy. A lot of hype on him over the summer. Uh, his prices are flat. The last 90 days, I will note that that one's a 2.6K. This one, I've mentioned this in previous videos. This one gets juiced because there is an issue with that card where the population count on the PSA 10 is skewed very, very low. You notice the PSA 10 pop on Lawrence is only 70, whereas the other guys are in the three, four, and five hundreds. Uh, his PSA 9 population is extremely high compared to everybody else. Uh, there was a printing defect or error on that card. So keep that in mind. That's going to inflate that price a little bit more than what it actually is compared to everybody else. Gets a little bit trickier when you start comparing across uh, because there's way less of that card than like the burrow that sells for around the same amount. Justin Fields, PSA 10 silver, 550. Oh, and Lawrence, once again, tons of hype on him with the Riddler and Christian Kirk now and new weapons. We will see what they do. He, I have Trevor Lawrence in a lot of fantasy leagues. I have a lot of the pieces and parts of that team. I do think they are going to have a pretty good year, but he has the potential to, if they do not have a good year, his stuff could take a little bit of a beating because it does feel like there is a lot baked into those prices. Fields, it all comes down to the running. We will see if he could figure out throwing the ball. Uh, absolutely electric to watch play football. He's sitting at 550 bucks, down slightly. Trey Lance, the once golden boy, down 30%, and that's after a bump up from going to the Cowboys. See if he gets on the field or not this year. If he doesn't play as well, he'll obviously get a bump, but I don't know that he is actually a quarterback. He just feels like more like an athlete. And then Mac Jones, the once hobby darling. I remember when his base Don Russ PSA 10 was selling for astronomical sums of money. Now his silver prism PSA 10 barely cracks 150 bucks, down 20%. In all honesty, uh, this is another one. I personally don't think Mac Jones is that great. But if he come out and play well, it's a lot easier for this Mac Jones card to go up than it is for the Trevor Lawrence card to go up, if that makes sense. Uh, because it is so low, it's not going to take much demand for that thing to jump up in price. Like if you had to place odds, the odds that the Mac Jones card doubles in value would be way better than the Trevor Lawrence card doubling in value. It's just the way this stuff works. Uh, the lower end stuff has way more upside from a profit potential. Sure, the Trevor Lawrence looks cooler. It's going to be bigger numbers. Oh my God, this card went up 500 bucks. But going up 500 bucks on a 2.6K card isn't exactly, I mean, it's a decent, but it's not like crazy. Whereas the Mac Jones doubling from 150 to 300 is way more in play than the Lawrence doubling, for example. Uh, and you could buy way more of the Mac Joneses for the same price as one Trevor Lawrence. And I'm not saying he's a better investment. Once again, I don't like Mac Jones per se, but you kind of get where I'm going with here. Next up, 2022 class. I went raw on this just to kind of get, I just more or less wanted to get a feel how these guys stack up. Uh, there are some PSA 10 sales, but they're a little all over the place. Uh, raw values, you, you know, condition's gonna swing these wildly, but I just kind of wanted to get a feel for how they're ranking out. Kenny Pickett by far the most expensive at 100. Sam Howe and Ritter basically coming in neck and neck at around that $45 to $50 mark. Pickett, lots of run up right before the season started. He was actually uh, down around the $60 to $75, $80 range. And then you could see here, just a couple of days ago, his stuff went way up. So I'm a little leery. And there was two sales way above the median. I'm a little weary when I see one like this. So we'll see what happens if this stays up here. It's obviously now going to depend on what happens in games. These three guys could go all over the place. Um, how all three of these got a lot of offseason pump to them one way or the other, justifiable or not. I'm not a huge fan of any individual one of them. They all, you can make a case for any of them. Pickett has the Steelers thing going for him. He has good weapons with Pickens and Deontay Johnson. Sam Howe is the trendy, super late round fantasy quarterback. He's a little, he got a little run in him. He's on the commanders. He's got Terry McLaurin, Jihad Dotson. You know, he's gotten a lot of like fantasy buzz. And I think that matters when it comes to cards. And then Ritter, same thing. He's kind of whatever, but he's got the trendy guys around him. You know, make of what you will of Kyle Pitts. He's been a huge fantasy disappointment. Drake London, B. John Robinson now. 
the offense is getting a lot of hype to them, and Ritter is kind of getting carried along because of that. Um, of the three, I guess I would go for Pickett or Howe. I don't know that I'm buying any at these prices. But once again, stuff like this has a better chance of going way up. You know, these are raw, so it's a little bit of a different story. But I would like my chances at Hal or Pickett doubling or tripling in value than Lawrence, Burrow, or Herbert. Uh, these guys have some stuff baked in, but not as much. And these are the cards typically when you look back at the end of the season. The stuff that people aren't expecting to happen are the ones that go way up. See, like Jared Goff last year. He had a nice rise during the season. And, and maybe he's a candidate for this. I didn't pull him up on this. He got pretty much, he got a pretty decent rise in the offseason. But those guys that kind of come out of nowhere that everyone's just kind of like, whatever on. Um, I don't want to give Dustin's boy any love, but like just a perfect example of this would be Derek Carr. If the Saints come out and played extremely well, no one cares about Derek Carr cards right now. Uh, his stuff could see a big percentage swing. It's a lot easier for something like that to happen than Herbert Burrow or Lawrence seeing big swings up. Uh, it's just hard when there's that much baked into those prices. Let's close out with a quick little glance at wide receivers. Um, it, I'm not big on chasing position players. I know Dakota over at Sports Cards Anonymous, he has good luck chasing like the linemen and all that craziness. And you can 100%. To, to say that you can only make money on quarterbacks is not true at all. You can 100% make money on other positions. I definitely don't want to mess with running backs. There's just way too many injury concerns there with everyone being a running back by committee these days. Outside a few guys, it gets really tricky. But on the wide receiver thing here, like I said, I just kind of pulled some of the more trendy modern guys. Uh, Justin Jefferson up at the top at 600 bucks in a PSA 10. Amron St. Brown, Sun God, coming in second at $280 on this list. I was shocked to see that he sells for more than Jamar Chase. In a PSA 10 silver, my only guess here is, is that this is all pop count related because Jamar Chase is in the 300s and Amron is in like in the 40s. So that's the only thing I can think of is that this is just totally a supply issue. So be a little careful with that because if he does, if his prices stay up, everyone's going to start sending in all their St. Brown cards. Now, I didn't look at PSA 9s on this. Maybe I should have to see if there is a print issue on this card as well. Maybe that's why the pop count's so low. Uh, usually how you could tell that is compare PSA 10 and nines of the same player, and then take that player and compare it to other players and see if the ratios match up. Uh, below that, we have Devontae Smith coming in at 75 bucks. AJ Brown, his running mate, also coming in at around 75 bucks. Kind of surprised by that one. Uh, AJ Brown had just an absolutely monster season last year. Smith was really good too, don't get me wrong, but... Interesting that those two guys basically sell for the same. Uh, and then I put Waddle down there at the bottom. Once again, right in line with those other guys, 75 bucks. All the trendy second round wide receivers in fantasy football. It's also intriguing to me that Jefferson is that far ahead of Chase. I, I Listen, Jefferson's really, really good. Don't get me wrong. Um, but the Chase pricing on this list is probably the most surprising to me. So. As always, curious for your thoughts and comments down below. That is all I have for you, boys and girls. Everyone have a wonderful first week one of football. Peace.